Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with another episode. What surprises should fans expect on tonight's SmackDown as the WWE follows up one of its biggest PLEs ever? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the 24th February edition of the Blue Brand, as well as all the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including why the Elite might be headed to WWE, news on the next Saudi Arabia PLE and why the Saudis are considered a top contender to buy WWE, a Cameron Grimes sighting, and more. As always, we won't recap the matches, but look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. The good, more meaningful matches. Tonight's show was another instance of the WWE making sure its various matches had storylines driving them. Imperium vs. Madcap, Strowman, and Ricochet was based on all three superstars' previous problems with Gunther and his cronies. Natalia vs. Shayna continued Natty's quest for revenge on the Queen of Spades and introduced a new player in Tegan Knox to the story of Baszler and Ronda Rousey trying to dominate the women's roster. Kofi vs. L.A. Knight was a fun match set up by L.A. Knight acting entitled to a WrestleMania match and The New Day reminding him that nothing is handed out to opponents. Dominic Dominates Dominic's promo against Charlotte Flair was a pleasant surprise as Mysterio trash-talks Charlotte, putting heat on himself and Rhea Ripley while also making Charlotte Flair look good by giving her opportunities to throw a few barbs at Dominic. Flair's promo included two Easter eggs sure to please fans as she referenced her Latino lover husband without naming him and told Dom that if her father was there, he'd kick Dominic's butt. Charlotte's promo skills are still average, but Dominic turned this into something memorable, even though the fans didn't get to see the Rhea vs. Charlotte encounter they expected. Solid Subplots SmackDown featured the usual foray of good matches and furtherance of storylines, but it also developed and built up subplots that will eventually grow into full-blown storylines. Whether it was Madcap Moss's slow turn to becoming a heel, Drew McIntyre eyeing the Intercontinental Championship, there was some solid storytelling on tonight's show. The Bloodline continues to entertain. Tonight's development of the question of Jay Uso's loyalty to the Bloodline continued, with Paul Heyman pressing Jimmy Uso to solve the problem, and later warning him that Roman Reigns told him to solve it this week, or Roman will solve it next week. This led to Sami Zayn confronting Jimmy Uso and reminding him that they were like brothers. Sami pled with Jimmy to realize that the Bloodline is all about Roman and no one else, and that Jimmy doesn't have to go down with the ship. Jimmy wasn't buying it and attacked Sammy, when Jay Uso appeared in the crowd, distracting Sammy. Things turned around as Zayn fought back, hitting a halluva kick before leaving through the crowd. Nothing seemed to be settled, which meant fans will have to tune in next week to see how things unfold. The Bad Running the Raiders into the Ground What's going on with the Viking Raiders? The WWE had Eric and Ivar ambush Drew McIntyre on SmackDown, leading to Sheamus running into even the odds. However, the WWE then had Braun Strowman and Ricochet join in on the melee, attacking the Raiders. The segment failed for multiple reasons, including the fact that Drew and Sheamus have defeated the Raiders clean twice now, and it made the babyfaces look like bullies for attacking them with the numbers advantage. It also made McIntyre and Sheamus look like chumps for needing help. Apparently, it takes four WWE superstars to deal with Eric and Ivar, but the Raiders can't win matches. Is this an instance of Triple H giving Vince the pencil for one team, just to keep him out of the rest of the show? A slow SmackDown Tonight's SmackDown was a bit too slow-paced for the show after Elimination Chamber, and a show that's only five weeks away from WrestleMania. A wrestling show is all about pacing, but tonight's show coasted compared to past SmackDowns. Tonight's episode should have featured something big, whether it was the start of a new feud or a major development in a story arc. Instead, the WWE paused as if it felt the fans needed to wind down before amping up the pace again. SmackDown wasn't a bad show, but it was badly paced compared to what fans expect every week. The Downright Ugly Avant-Garde Awfulness Tonight's Bray Wyatt segment was an example of letting the inmates run the asylum. There's no denying that Wyatt has a creative mind, but tonight's Firefly Funhouse was a quagmire of quirkiness that went nowhere and did nothing to further WWE's plans for Wyatt at WrestleMania. This segment was both likely to cause audiences to cringe and worse, change the channel. Are the Elite WWE bound? Topping today's news, are the Elite headed to WWE? WrestleMania discussed how Kenny Omega's AEW deal could be over soon, depending on how much time the company adds to the cleaner's contract due to him being out for months with various injuries. In addition, it's believed the Young Bucks, Nick and Matt Jackson's contracts will be over by the end of the year. 
This is definitely food for thought, but add the following information to things, and it's easy to understand why some fans and pundits feel the current AEW Trios champions could be headed to Titanland. Dave Meltzer noted in this week's Observer that the reason some feel this way is, part of this is because the feeling Omega and the Young Bucks have a good shot at sticking together. Barry Bloom has been Omega's agent since his late 2018, early 2019 New Japan contract ended. With talk the WWE will make some major money offers to free agents, the company could see a big influx of talent from AEW. Is Saudi Arabia a top candidate to buy WWE? As the WWE sales talks continue, one name keeps coming up, Saudi Arabia. At one point, a story broke that the Saudi Public Investment Fund, or PIF, had purchased the promotion. That turned out to be premature, but according to Dave Matthew, the Saudis are not only very interested in buying the WWE, but they're the top contender. Diamond Dave reported in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Bloomberg had an article this week on the WWE sale, saying Vince McMahon was looking to get $9 billion for the company. The numbers in last week's issue were based on an expected $8 billion price. A number like that would put Saudi Arabia, which absolutely has interest, as a leading contender. Meltzer explained the motivations for different buyers and why Saudi Arabia would be willing to fork over Vinnie Mac's asking price. He noted what Saudi Arabia wants are franchises that have a worldwide fan base, preferably big in the US, and they are not looking at them for revenue and profitability, but to bring publicity to their country and normalize the world views of their country. It's completely different from Endeavor or any other purchaser's goal would be, which would be to buy the company based on it being able to turn gigantic profits. It all comes down to the Saudi Arabian government's desire to use wrestling as a sports washing tool, much like it has tried to do with its LIV Golf League. The now and forever push? Does the WWE still have big plans for Austin Theory? Fans skeptical following Vince's departure and Theory's failed Money in the Bank cash-in have noticed a push for the current United States champion, but is this a short-term push or something else? According to Dave Meltzer, the WWE still has big plans for Theory, noting Austin's upcoming WrestleMania match with John Cena, rumored but not confirmed, is just the beginning. Austin Theory vs. John Cena for the US title. Theory is clearly a major project to be a top guy for a long time. What do you think of the self-proclaimed now and forever champion's push? Cameron Grimes sighting. Good news for fans searching for signs of former NXT superstar Cameron Grimes, the former North American champion hadn't been seen in the ring since November despite rumors he was headed to the main roster. Now, Fightful Select reports Cameron wrestled a dark match on the 24th February SmackDown against Hit Row's Ashanti The Adonis. You may recall a previous report that the WWE was waiting for the right storyline before putting Grimes on TV, so this could be a sign a main roster appearance is imminent. Did Bray Wyatt tease a new member of his faction? Is Eric Young going to join Bray Wyatt's faction? Rumors are running wild after Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse aired on the 24th February SmackDown. One of the segments included a game show, Can You Keep a Secret?, with some fans noting the voiceover artist sounded like former WWE superstar Eric Young. Young is believed to be on his way to the WWE or already there. Would you like to see Young in Wyatt's group? Let us know in the comments below. Where is the King of the Ring PLE being held? Speaking of Saudi Arabia, some fans are curious what happened to the rumored May Saudi Arabia PLE following reports the WWE was holding two PLEs in May, Backlash and King of the Ring slash Queen's Crown. Turns out the WWE is still holding a show in Saudi Arabia, and according to PW Insider, it will be the King of the Ring event. Roman's Ridiculous Rating Last but not least, the rumors of Roman Reigns getting a ridiculous rating in WWE 2K23 confirmed this with a tweet. The Tribal Chief has a historic rating of 99, the highest ever for a WWE superstar in a 2K game. No word if the 99 also represents how many years the WWE intends to keep the belt around Roman's waist. Well guys, there you have it, WrestleMania's look at the 24th February edition of SmackDown, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know in wrestling. Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.